We took advantage of the fact that everybody knows Shakey's, you know. During uncertain times and like what happened in, in COVID, you know, people have to make sure they spend their money wisely. Mm. And the tendency is to go less experimental and, mm. you know, adventurism is down. So they go back to trusted brands. Even before COVID, we have really been investing heavily in our delivery platform. And we were already deep into digital. Hi everyone, we are in again for another special treat today. We're back to do a deep dive on another listed company in the stock market. In today's podcast, we have the president and CEO of Shakey's Pizza Asia Ventures Incorporated, Vic Gregorio, with us today. So, welcome to the podcast, Vic. Happy to be here, Marvin, and uh, good afternoon or to all of your uh, followers. I know there's a lot of them. Before I go to the meat of what I want to talk about, I I have some icebreaker questions ready for you. Uh, Okay. Number one is this. uh, Mojo's or pizza? Pizza. Pizza. Pizza Now, as we start to somehow know that all of the restrictions for travel will be out, is there a specific city that you would want to go into? Oh, yeah. I want to go back to... Tokyo, in Japan. Mm. You know, uh, I miss the, the I miss the vibes there. <laughs> uh, the clean surroundings, the culture, the respectful people. Will you be eating pizza in Tokyo or not? Not anymore. <laughs> no, definitely go sushi and Japanese food. Okay, I, I'm curious about this. Uh, as a president and CEO, what was going in your head? At the moment, the lockdowns were released. That they said Metro Manila is going to a strict lockdown, and then it will spread to the whole country. What was the first thing that came up? You know, to be honest, uh, I declared this to my team, no, and, and, and to the board. It was a total shock. It was like a black event, no. And for the first time in my career, I did say, I don't know what's going on. Mm. I don't know what's going on. It was totally, it caught me and the company by surprise. Um, and all of a sudden, you have you face a situation where everything becomes irrelevant. No? Uh, the rules have changed, the environment has changed. And you see, it struck us at the time we were doing very well in mm. the first two and a half months of the year. You know, we, were, we were so excited to end the year with the art. 17th double digit growth consecutive years no in top line and bottom line so wow. we were very excited imagine that no <laughs> for for, uh, for so long uh, we were always bent on growth and when it hit us clearly that growth would end mm. uh, but it, it one consolation we have as a team is you know the end of the run was not because of uh errors in strategy or competitive uh, pressure you know that the, the had to end because of an unprecedented global pandemic so parang in hindsight now that was the only acceptable thing for us uh, acceptable reason if the run had to end so now we're back to focusing on how to continue with the run but i totally agree with that no, no one at the end of 2019 predicted that by the first quarter, the whole of the Philippines will be literally shut down. And from a business standpoint, what was the hardest part of uh, the lockdowns for all for for you as a business? Well, as a business, well, we are in an industry that is one of the most hardest hit. No, you you talk about we're we're right bunched with travel, airlines, uh, uh, tourism, hotels. And retail because they disallowed people from going out and eating out. Uh, that was for us the, the most problematic part. Uh, most restaurant uh, players really rely on dine-in, mm. and only a few are dedicated, purely dedicated for delivery or off-premise. So that's why the whole industry, especially in this country, in, in the Philippines, eating out is a social thing, right? Mm. Uh, so no one. No one anticipated it to come so rapidly and abruptly. 
mm-hmm. and dramatically. So, talaga pinawal, bawal to eat out, no? For two, almost like a month, no? Two to three weeks for sure. And that's where things really got our reach. Everybody, big or small, mm-hmm. big change, small change, independence, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it was an equalizer. The COVID affected everybody. Mm-hmm. No one was exempted. And, and that was the difficult part. Revenue really got hit. Speaking of revenue, no, and, and this has been disclosed across the board for a lot of the food chains, It the second quarter and the third quarter of 2020 was something that was very, very difficult and has impacted earnings. Uh, based on what's going on right now, the, how long do you think everything would go back towards the trajectory of growth? Once again, you mentioned 17 years of unprecedented growth. We got there was a hiccup for 2020. Uh, will it take long to come back to that trajectory again? It would depend on on how each player or each business uh, adapts to the to the new normal or to the crisis. We did get hit uh, in, in Q2, but you know we're very pleased to to see a recovery in, in the third and fourth quarter. No? So we were we were. We're seeing numbers that were even exceeded our expectations. So we had our own forecast for because of COVID, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. we ended the year relatively much better than what we even thought. And so we look at uh, to recover to uh, earnings maybe at the end of 2022 mm-hmm. to pre-COVID, mm-hmm. and then uh, top line um, around the year after. Because why not the same? Because this crisis also gave us the opportunities to, you know, fine-tune our execution, mm-hmm. uh, review our cost structures, you know, and take advantage of the of the crisis to restructure, renegotiate. So, even if the revenue line is not yet uh, to pre-COVID levels, there is a very good chance earnings will be at pre-COVID, and mm-hmm. we want to keep that and smart from the from the crisis and take advantage so that it really opens uh, opportunities on how to execute and, and that's what we've done in the last uh, since March you know, that has been uh, our primary focus and I like what you said now while you were saying that what, what came into my mind was like a slingshot that the longer you pull it it may take some time before the release will happen but if it's done right the trajectory will be higher so i was picturing that while you were you were sharing all of these things but you 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 mentioned that there were changes that you made uh i'm i'm so curious about that what were the pivots that were done uh during uh, most likely the past 9 months and how did you also uh, innovate in the midst of the pandemic? There are several cost structures that are critical. No, to, uh, uh, our main cost items would be our raw material costs, labor, and rent. Okay? Mm, rent um, yeah. So these three areas, we had to go back to uh, to the drawing board and really go zero basic. Given the situation, how do we optimize uh, operations and performance in these areas? And, you know, things that we probably wouldn't be able to, to do before COVID, we were able to do this year. There were more bases to negotiate, there were more bases to, to, to uh, fine tune and, and trim the fat. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we've been growing and we have been producing very heavy margins, uh, even relative to the industry. Mm-hmm. But it was so wonderful to see that even while we were doing better, uh, there were still opportunities to, to trim down the fat during the crisis. And the crisis act forced the issue uh, to all players in the industry. Mm-hmm. Um, so we, that's what we did. And uh, we took advantage of some of the assets we already had. Uh, Shakey's as a brand has been around since 1975. It's one of the longer brands in the Philippines. And uh, we took advantage of the fact that everybody knows Shakey's, you know. The brand love was always was high. We had leadership position in the full service pizza category, and in the full service restaurant category, we were number one. And the brand has very high recall, so we were able to take advantage of that because during uncertain times and like what happened in, in COVID, you know people have to make sure they spend their money wisely. Mm. And the tendency is to go less experimental and mm. 
you know, adventurism is down. So they go back to trusted brand. That's that's one thing we, we really saw and took advantage of. Second, even before COVID, Shakey's was already multi-channel. You know? We're not, well, we were very strong as a dining destination. The fact that our core product is pizza automatically made us a delivery option. Mm. So even before COVID, we have really been investing heavily in our delivery platform. And we were already deep into digital. Uh, we were already having our own web, uh, mobile app, uh, web ordering, and all of those things. And uh, lo and behold, that was exactly what was needed in, in, in this crisis, right? Because people cannot go out and they have to stay at home. So we took advantage of the assets we've built over time, over our delivery platform and digital. So the transition was a lot easier no? and it allowed us to navigate to the uh, to the tough times where dine in was out much better than 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 most mm -hmm. so uh, the shift has been definitely from dine in to off premise mm -hmm. and uh, all of the product innovation and the agility that we've been working on the ability to move fast also came into play uh, Marvin we we always thought you know the word agile was a buzzword already even before <laughs> crisis Two three years, everybody was talking about agile, and you know, we were into it. We were very much into it. We were learning from everybody we can learn from on how to be an agile organization, and it helped. It helped us during the during this crisis, and continues to help us as we navigate. Because, uh, like it or not, COVID is still here. There is still risk of another another ECQ. So. Having the organizational ability to decide, analyze, and move fast is is important, and we're able to take advantage of that one. I'm I'm curious about this. You you mentioned about uh, you, you mentioned about selling off the internet uh, prior to COVID. Would do you know top of head how 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 much was the con percentage wise the contribution of online? Then how did it shift and push up right right in the midst of the lockdowns as well? Before COVID, we did see a, a very clear shift towards uh, digital and non-voice. Non no? uh, like I said, we already had a very strong delivery business. But the, the lion's share was to our very popular hotline, no? the 777. So the bulk of the order was through voice. But as early as 2017, we were seeing people migrating to non-voice. Especially the young, the young, uh, the younger Filipinos. Mm -hmm. So we already predicted, eventually, uh, digital online ordering will be the bigger part rather than the voice. Okay. Uh, so we've had all of those initiatives and investments, and we just got caught by the crisis, where, where we were still midstream into some of the more newer innovations and newer, newer uh, features that we were adding. But the plan was already existing. It was already uh, part of the of the program and part of the execution. You you mentioned that there were there was a shift from people dining in as to compared to just ordering, uh, because of this pandemic. And even if the vaccine is rolled out and then we all go back, that somehow mobility uh, eases already. How do you think this has affected the casual dining industry? Uh, as a, as a whole already, what are the biggest changes that you've seen uh, that will be implemented even after this pandemic? Clearly, this this crisis dramatically, <laughs> dramatically, I cannot overemphasize, uh, affected the industry, how we think in this business, you know. Um, the uh, COVID-19 pandemic accelerated uh, the need to go digital and to be, to be, able to provide uh, products and services that are off-premise. Um, brands who did not have very strong presence or didn't have the capability really suffered the most. And um, brands that were already into delivery or premise, their products, their, their store design, you know, their uh, services and platforms already incorporated off-premises found it easier to navigate than 
it was not new. Mm. Uh, we just had to, you know, uh, accelerate and exponentially uh, pivot mm. the dine-in resources and assets into off-premise. So for us in Shakey's, um, we saw we saw it turn around, no? being majority dine-in mm-hmm. to off-premise, it, it switched. And that transition did affect uh, revenue because Shakey's was is known for also a very favorite uh, destination place for birthday celebration, mm-hmm. and that, those those are forbidden up to now, right? So kids cannot go out, and we've always been a family restaurant. So you see people, the whole family, uh, extended family, eating in a Shakey store. The Lola, the Lolo, the, the kids. We have something for everybody. And when it was forbidden, then that part of the business suffered. Mm. But the good thing is, we can deliver to their kids. We can deliver something healthy, Lola. Mm. And again, that that's where that is where uh, we took advantage of the assets we have. Now, moving forward, everybody will have to discern and reconfigure you know, their store model. Uh, you cannot build those very big boxes nowadays. Mm. It, it wouldn't. It wouldn't be practical. It would be too risky, in fact. So you can expect more smaller designs, concepts uh, to be rolling out. Um, we have uh, introduced a lot of this even before COVID. We already had ghost kitchens, uh, Marvin, mm. even before. We wanted to make sure our service execution was fast. So we were already. We already had about less than about 10 uh, extension kitchens or ghost kitchen or whatever you call it. And it really worked uh, very, very much uh, in this crisis and we're we're expanding the the growth in that area. So almost everybody will be looking into that, into delivery and carry out. Uh, We have been successful in our park and order. So people are very safety conscious and they are afraid about the virus. So they'd rather wait outside the store. Someone go to them, take their order and deliver the, their order to, to the car. No, It's also less hassle because you don't have to go and sign up, you know, register. They go to you. And and also, if you feel like eating, uh, you're, you're hungry lunch, you can just park and they can serve you lunch. And you can have your, your bunch of lunch in, in your car or your chicken and mojos, you know, in your car. So uh, this has helped us a lot. And that's why the growth areas will be um, our delivery, our day out, and our aggregator business. So mm-hmm. We have been working with uh, these aggregator best players since as early as tw- early 2019. So mm-hmm. it's also something that we have created relationships with. And that aggregator business has really also grown dramatically during the few months last week. I remember when you mentioned bunch of lunch, it was something that I grew up with also. It was something that when you when you're starting out, okay na to, it's a complete me- meal okay, altogether na. already. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you mentioned about aggregators. For those who are watching this and are not too familiar between the synergy of Shakey's and aggregators, how does it normally uh, play out also and how does it uh, and how does it work for you as compared to your own uh, your own fleet as well? We see uh, the aggregator business as an important part you now moving forward. Uh, it, you cannot go away with aggregator partnering with aggregators. They have such a strong clout. Mm. Uh, they're real sign for that you know, convenience and off-premise thing. Um, so what we, we, we see is we see a healthy partnership moving forward, but at the same time, we always would develop our own internal capability. We think moving forward, what will make sense is to have strong, healthy partnerships with them, but at the same time, creating your own loyal base on delivery platforms. That will be, I think, the, the best solution moving forward. And I think that those who will go straight to uh, to order from you are people who already are intentional. I really want to get mojos today and those from the aggregators are the ones that are just lurking around. They're not yet sure what they would want to buy yep. up until something gets pushed. And then, oh, I, I think I like, true. I like chicken or pizza or mojos for today. So something, something like that. <laughs> you know, you, you take advantage of the 
the stem of the aggregators and you may have about 100 or so restaurants there with mm. offers and like that. Mm. But if you're really already a fanatic of a follower of a certain brand, you know, and they, especially if that brand makes it easier for you to access their their website or their ordering system, then you might be surprised. There might even be more discounts directly going to the other brands than oh. going to the to the aggregator. So, and the aggregators uh, also have their own promo. At the end of the day, uh, it has to be again a balance, mm. and that's how it should, it should be. I'm curious about this. Throughout the interview, you've mentioned brand, brand, brand several times. And I would always tell this to a lot of people that when you invest in a company, look for brand because brand is everything. The larger and the stronger the brand of the company, that becomes also like a moat na mas mahirap siyang matalo because people would uh, recognize it. How how strong of an emphasis that you would always put in brand building as a business? You know, I'm glad you 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 raised that up. Uh, brand is everything, mm. I, I, I believe, right? in my experience. Anybody can make a pizza, mm. uh, but a brand that is trusted and in love also gets preferred. So the brand trust, the brand love plays a very important role in the minds of the of the consumer. Um, and that we believe we have to develop, continuously enhance and invest in the Shakey's brand. It is a brand that many Filipinos have grown with. And when you equate the brand already with iconic like Mojo, Sponge of Lunch, Incredit Pizza, Manager's Choice, it becomes even more powerful. And you'd never stop investing in the brand. Okay? So in, in Shakey's, uh, the three pillars that we need to continuously invest in, we said, was invest in the brand, invest in the stores, invest in the people. Also, the quality of the team, the people that you have, is something that you must be very conscious and you continue to enhance their capabilities to training, development, and and you know how to keep them because otherwise, if you don't take care of them, you don't keep them, they'll also go. So for us, the brand also is like the glue you know, mm. that puts it all together and makes that unique selling proposition. If not that, uh, there may be similar businesses, similar concepts, but sustaining that the advantages may, may be difficult and probably even Ferrari without a brand. And I, I agree with that also no, when you go to a shaky store, it's the experience. Uh, you have different stores that are, are way cooler than other uh, casual dining chain, especially the one in Magallanes. That was a very, very uh, interesting. Uh, that's a very, very interesting branch uh, that looks so different from other, other, uh, other stores in the Philippines. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm curious. I'm curious about this. You mentioned about building the Shakey's brand, but you had some acquisitions through the years. You went into Peri Peri, and then you also went into R and D uh, last year. I, I'm, I'm curious about um, those, the. I guess the strategy behind that and the, the timing also, especially for R&D, which was done in the midst of the pandemic. We have always had a vision of growth no? in, in, in the group. Um, and we wanted to see the group become a portfolio of what we would call the WOW brands, brands that would have distinct uh, selling propositions, you know, trusted and loved. And the only way we see that happening is when the brand like Shakey's or anything else we acquire has the ability to wow, <laughs> has the ability to exceed the expectations of, of the guest. Because it's not about building the brand so that you, you can just charge more. Mm. It's not that. No? Like you build a brand and then you charge them like your a Lexus or a Porsche. <laughs> you know? that, for me, it's not. It's, it's building that brand trust so that they can continue patronizing you, trusting you, and, mm. and, and giving you business. And the way to do that is when you are able to really not just meet their expectations, but even exceed them so that the value of peso is really worth it. Not they, everybody values their money and it's not about going for the cheapest thing. It's going, for me, it's always about going for the best value. And best value does not equate to cheapest. Mm. So, you turn about our action. Shakey's continues to grow. 
So we uh, partnered with a couple of groups in the Middle East, uh, Kuwait and, and Dubai. Singapore was always a market we always wanted to be in. So near, there's a lot of also a Filipino base there. Uh, but our expansion strategy for Shake, we wanted to make sure it was not just focused on the Filipino overseas workers. Mm. Uh, it would be a beachhead, if you will, but to make it sustainable, the, the concept has to be able to go mainstream.